Zemo Hydra. Right? All right. So there's obviously only four characters on this version of the team. A lot of people have a fifth character uh, that they enjoy. Some people like to use Kingpin because Kingpin crossbones. You know, some people like to use... I like to use Gamora because there's nothing else to do with her. Another character that works really well with this team is Mantis. If you're trying to build a little bit more sustainability on the team, give them a little bit of heals. Uh, you can also... You know, Black Panther, because of all the AoE damage they're going to be doing, there's a lot of characters that can improve the quality of this team. So, I think we have to start off by addressing that elephant in the room, and the fifth character on the team is going to slightly change how you build this team out. Even if that character is Red Skull from my previous video, and you have him at Skirmisher or Striker, uh, that can do a slight difference. So, I'm going to, instead of just say this is right and this is right i'm going to kind of rewind it a little bit and just talk about what the character itself does and less about what that fifth character is uh whoever you happen to pick uh, if you like i could do an, a quick little conversation at the end about kingpin which i'll throw in because most people tend to use him because he's useless anywhere else but uh, for now we're just going to talk about these characters starting with <laughs> grenadier hydra arsenal if Zemo's now i gain damage gain focus because of all this extra focus, he has a very reasonable pool of focus. It just takes a lot to get him there. So Skirmisher already on the top of your head is a reasonable investment. But Tony, you have him as Raider, correct? Because I have one belief, and that's you put Raider on characters that hit multiple times or multiple people or both. And both of this character's attacks, Corrosive Grenade, hits uh, multiple characters twice. Uh, this attack hits multiple characters once. So I like the idea of having this character uh, apply vulnerable stacks to your opponents, uh, especially because uh, it clears one positive effects from each target and it happens twice. So the first attack could take out a block and the second and clear off another uh, deflect that they have on them. So the third the sorry the first attack does those two things. So the second attack could technically also crit on a character who can't block, and we've already talked enough about block to go into there. So I think Raider on this character is kind of like, duh. It also improves the quality. I don't think he has a health pool worth looking at uh, survivability on characters. Uh, I think pure damage is also reasonable, and I think Skirmisher, because of how Corrosive gr Grenade works and because of how Flak Grenade actually works, getting a little bit extra focus at high Skirmisher is good. Uh, I don't think you want to necessarily turn Flak Grenade into just... Uh, a weaker version of corrosive grenade with skirmisher like three but you can and it's reasonable i like raider i think skirmisher is fine i think damage is fine the survivability ones don't work too much on him crossbones uh you can go multiple different ways on crossbones for example you can even never put a tier four into him i'll just go ahead and do this Shh, don't tell anybody uh <laughs> tier three so uh as far as his passive is concerned it does nothing um, other than boost the armor and increase his own health. So there's nothing there that stands out. Detonate. Uh, this attack cannot miss, although it can be dodged. He's hitting everybody. This is another arguably strong reason for Raider. His first, the first thing he does in this team is going to be ult. Uh, it's likely that a crit will stick a vulnerable on somebody. It's not unreasonable to put crit on him. Or you can just boost into his damage. His damage is pretty average middle of the pack so getting it a little bit higher won't hurt i've seen some people put healer on him i disagree with that not because it doesn't improve his quality as a character more because he's not actually a tank the way you use the this team hydro team offensively you don't really need much sustainability but i understand if you are trying to do some campaign nodes with hydra healer isn't unreasonable just remember it's not a great end game build for him uh, moving to Winter Soldier, you'll notice I don't have anything on him, and uh, that's a good reason, because Winter Soldier kind of sucks. Uh, he does good damage, he has a pretty high crit rate. I'm just going to go ahead and put these in here, because they mean nothing to me anymore, uh, as we talk about what the builds can be. So Expert Assassin, he has a high crit chance, so you can increase his crit chance, you know? Uh, mechanical Arm, uh, this attack cannot be blocked. This is incredibly relevant, because if it cannot be blocked, that means Deflects can't prevent it from critting, which means it is very likely that this character is going to take 
uh, a, a critical attack. And if you had Raider on him, he would be able to apply the vulnerable. Mechanical art. We did that one already. My bad. Uh, Relentless Assault. This is another primary target bonus attack. Can just hit a target multiple times and do stuff. So, like, every single piece on Winter Soldier, every single piece is screaming, Tony, why not put crit on him? Uh, and the answer is... You can. Like, there's nothing wrong with putting crit on him. It's it's reasonable. Um, it makes him reasonably damaged, strong damage dealer. He doesn't actually gain crit damage ever, except through the ISO itself. Uh, but his crit chance, uh, as it is, this is where things get a little bit wonky. So his base crit chance is, is 25. He has 10 to start, and he gains 15 here. He gains an additional 5% for self and all Hydra allies, assuming you don't have the fifth Hydra character on the team. It's just, uh, you know, the handful that's there. Well, then his crit rating goes up by another 20%. So where is he? He's at 45%. You add this, he goes to like 60% with Raider. Whatever. It's one, you know, we've, we've talked about the 50%, 60%. 75% the breakpoints on that. There's no reason to go into that. Um, and it is reasonable, but because he doesn't increase his critical damage until very high up on the tier in, in Raider, uh, you would... It wouldn't kill you to not put Raider on him. Um, I don't like Skirmisher. Healer and Fortifier aren't particularly relevant, but I do think Striker is reasonable for a couple of reasons. One, he has a pretty decent chunk of base damage uh, comparatively to, you know, the rest of the team. So it's okay to give him a little bit more on that. Second, the bleed stacks uh, that are applied here are based on a percentage of his damage stat and, you know, that'll make them bleed harder. Uh, as you go on, I think that crit is totally reasonable. I think that striker is totally reasonable. I think that Skirmisher is cute. I don't think you have to worry too much about these things sticking, even though he does have, honestly, pretty abysmal focus. I think the plus 20% focus you get uh, that's granted to the team, or 30%, I forgot exactly how much it is, uh, is reasonable enough that you don't have to worry too much. And again, if you're going with the crit anyway, it's just about big damage. He doesn't really survive that long on his own, so for most players, it's just... Have this attack crush somebody and walk away. I think crit's reasonable, but it, there are reasons to put on something else on Winter Soldier. Last but not least, we have Zemo. Zemo gets Raider or Striker. That's it. That's the only two things that matter. Uh, Raider. It, it just weirds me out that an entire team would have Raider, but I did it for Power Armor and it made sense. Almost entire Power Armor team. So I have him at, at Striker. One, to boost his damage up a little bit. Uh, just because. And two, because the crit uh, here that happens, you know, I'd rather do more reliable damage than get eaten by a, a booster or, or something that might not get removed. I think either work, either are incredibly reasonable. Uh, most people will swear by Raider on him. Uh, I've tried something that isn't Raider. The pure damage has actually helped a significant amount for this. Uh, just because 900% of damage, you know, well, 450, 900 on a minion, like, that 5% damage is more, you know, like, it's more damage. So the chance of it critting is cool, but increasing the overall outcome of damage made a lot of sense to me, as well as premeditation. Again, Raider makes perfect sense on him. The reason I don't have Raider on him is because I'm a dummy testing other stuff. Uh, there's no reason to worry about it. All of his attacks, excuse me, benefit from Raider. Uh, if you have Skirmisher on him, Striker is a little bit better, but that's the same conversation we had in the previous video. Uh, you really can't go wrong with any damage increase on Zemo. Whether there's a minute argument for Raider over Striker, uh, you know, show me the numbers. Uh, not of what could happen, but of how frequently it will happen and like the difference. That's what I always like to look for. I like to look for 
increasing the base damage, how much that improves it, or how likely the crits are to do more damage. But that's pretty much what it comes down to when you look at this team. The last thing I'll say is if Kingpin is on the team uh, and all of the assists become possible, then you may want to look at maybe dropping some of these abilities down for Skirmisher because all of the assists become more likely when Kingpin's present. Uh, Kingpin himself can be given healer, and then the rest of the team could be sustained through his giant health pool, uh, because that's all he has is health, no armor. That's a great option. Uh, but again, you would probably want to put uh, Kingpin, you'd probably want to put Skirmisher on Hydra Grenadier, and maybe one other character just to increase the probability that it gets boosted or that a, a random character will apply a buff but at the same point having crit on most of these characters means that their assist could crit and do the same thing that's up to you if you use a character like black panther or gamora a brawler that takes advantage of characters who are at very low health which is how crossbone zemo and grenadier set up the team then you know you just want whatever ends up outputting the most damage on them so striker or crit based on who they are and if you're getting for a little bit more sustain then you don't have to worry about survivability on the rest of the characters just make sure that whoever you're using to sustain mantis minerva whomever you end up choosing ends up being a character that can uh you know keep everybody reasonably high up other than that this team is incredibly simple on uh, offense or defense in war. Uh, Zemo stands on his own merit. I think that Zemo is a better Raider character on loan. I think on this team, Striker just gives him a little bit more, but that's my opinion. Oh, I haven't put anything on him. We'll just go ahead and put Raider on him because, like I said, the points are made up and none of this matters. Um, but there's, there's truly not a lot. The idea of this team is that they're not a survivable or sustainable team. Their job is to do as much damage as quickly as possible. Uh, and Zemo's going to be kind of doing all the work anyway. So it's totally reasonable to just put Raider or Striker on any or all of these characters and get away with the murder they're going to commit. Uh, comment below and let me know how mad you are that my Zemo is a Striker because I already know it's coming. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Sconchili and I'm going to catch you later.